What's up everybody, Jay's Two Cents here, and today we're gonna talk about beatboxing. No, not beatboxing, beatboxing, which is actually ASRock's brand new Nook style PC. This thing is extremely small, and in fact they measure it in liters, and it comes in at just over a half liter in size. It's kind of interesting, but that, that's the way they do it. Whether you're looking for a pump, reservoir, custom GPU block, or a complete loop in a box, AlphaCool's wide range of products can make your next water cooling adventure an easy one. Click the link in the description for more details. All right, the V-Box is a tiny, tiny PC. That is just really just throwing it out there high level. It is a super tiny, full functioning PC. In fact, it's already hooked up behind me here. Now, we're gonna talk about some of its features. We're gonna talk about some of the options because there's actually three different variants of this. And we'll kind of do like a little demo of exactly how well the thing performs. All right, so I'm gonna to refer to my notes here or I would never get this right. Now, there's three different systems that are available uh, from the uh, B-Box lineup here. You've got the bare bones and then you've got full systems, one with an OS and one without an OS. Now, the one we're looking at here is actually equipped with the Intel N3000, which is basically a Celeron. Uh, currently shows it's a 1.04 gigahertz machine. Now that actually sounds extremely slow, uh, but it's actually very capable for what it is. Now it is 64-bit Microsoft uh, Windows 8 on here. I'm not sure if it's actually 8.1, but it says 8 anyway. Uh, and it is a running four gigabytes of installed memory. It says 3.67 gigabytes usable. That's because 256 megabytes pretty much are gonna be allocated to uh, the internal graphics memory chip or graphics chip that's on the CPU. So that's why you'll see usables a little bit less. Uh, but anyway, it is a Nook style PC. So that means it's extremely small. This is not a gaming PC. This is not really a workstation PC. This thing is designed for like multimedia playback or being maybe some sort of a satellite PC that you can remote desktop to another PC. There's just a lot of different functions for this thing. Now it is actually available all the way up to an Intel quad core uh, N3150 processor, which is up to 2.08 gigahertz. So it's like twice the power of this one here. But the one they sent me here is kind of a, a decent mid-range where uh, you're not gonna have, you know, top of the line specs, but we're gonna go ahead and kind of take a look at the demo here of how well it performs sitting kind of right in the middle. Now for storage on this particular one here, we've got 128 gigabyte uh, M SATA drive. Now they're all compatible with M SATA as well as uh, supporting one two and a half inch uh, SATA drive like an SSD or even a mechanical if you wanted. And it does include the adapter for that as well if you want to add another storage device to this. So this being only 128 gigabytes, I'm not gonna be really putting any games on it. I'm not even gonna be able to store any real big multimedia files or anything like that. But it would be perfect to put it, say in a home theater PC, accessing movies on a NAS or something like that. Now for connectivity, it has three monitor outputs on there. It's got two HDMI as well as a display port on there. Now we're currently hooked up to a display port and a 4K mono price panel right here. And we'll be doing some 4K playback as well as doing some uh, Steam in-home streaming from Skunkworks over to this machine right here. Now this is also the world's first Nook that has the USB type C standard. Now we have seen USB 3.1 come out already but you guys know that that pretty much uses the same uh, non-reversible full-size USB plug that we're gonna start seeing people move away from here in later 2015 going to 2016, where Type-C is gonna become the new standard pretty much for PCs and phones. So this thing does have a Type-C right on the front as well as a super speed USB 3.0 on the back, two more of those on the rear, and just a ton of connectivity. Now it also features a pretty powerful wireless device in here and it's got 802.11a, C as well as Bluetooth 4.0. So you'll be able to hook up your phone to it, you can stream music to it, you can uh, take Bluetooth devices like keyboards and mice and controllers and just have a lot of connectivity with this. And with it being Bluetooth and also fitting in kind of that multimedia sphere, Bluetooth connection is readily available on our smartphones and our tablets. So it makes connecting the thing extremely easy. Now, last but not least, before we do the demo here, it also has a multimedia remote control. Trust me when I say this would have come in handy when the wife and I were catching up on Game of Thrones, and if we had to stop it or pause it or something. I, I taken a small form factor PC and put it in the living room. I don't have a full-time home theater PC. This would have come in handy because I was just using a small PC that didn't have a remote control, and anytime we had to start the next episode or pause it or rewind it, we'd have to get our big butts up out of our couches, or my big butt. You know, the, wife, the wife, of course, doesn't have a big butt. 
I would never say that. But I'd have to get up off the couch and go over and wiggle the mouse and I'd have to rewind it. But this thing has a full multimedia remote control. All right, let's go ahead and turn around. Let's do a little bit of a demo here showing you how well the thing performs. And uh, we'll just kind of have some final thoughts on the thing. Transition. Now I figure the first thing we'll do here is we'll do kind of a restart test. Sometimes these small machines take a long time to start and turn off and all that. And as you can see, it turned off pretty quickly here, especially since it's only a Celeron, it's only running 1.04 gigahertz. It's not fast at all. But you can see that with the lightweight of Windows 8, at least that's what they claimed, uh, it's perfect for devices like this. And the monitor itself is kind of slow to turn on though. So there it is. See, now we're already back into uh, the desktop. So that's actually pretty quick. In fact, that's, that's very near the speed of Skunk Works. But then again, Skunk Works doesn't have the fastest boot in the world either. So here's what we're going to do now. We're just going to do a 4K video playback demo here. They've got a little demo thing on here. Uh, it's not my video. It is going to look kind of like their ad, but it's already loaded on here. So I'm just going to go ahead and play it. turn that down. So you can see playback on this thing is extremely smooth. I'm not sure how well it's being translated into the video, but this is a 4K playback right here. Now one other thing I forgot to mention was that they do come in three colors, black, white, and uh, gold. They sent me the gold unit, which uh, I would have preferred the black or the white, but I mean, I guess it's, it's very similar to like Apple colors, which is funny because it looks like Apple displays on there. So yeah, 4K playback on this scene is extremely smooth. All right, that's enough of that. Let's go ahead and do uh, the Steam demo like I wanted to do here. So here's my weak library of things that are installed right now on Skunk Works because it automatically detected that uh, there was another system on the network that has Steam open, which it is right now on Skunk Works. So let's go ahead and do some Grand Theft Auto uh, 5 right here on the Nook streaming from Skunk Works. Now don't worry, it will scale properly once it starts. All right, so the settings right now, as we can see, settings are set to, uh, right now I set it down to 1080p. I didn't want to do 1440, which is Skunk Works where it's at. It's gonna make it harder on the decoder here, uh, but I could do 1440 if I wanted. It's gonna stream whatever is streaming from the source but it's also gonna downsample it to whatever the actual resolution I'm playing on this machine is right now, which is 1080p, but MSAA is on and everything. So here's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna run around and cause a little mayhem here. Now the FPS is gonna be pretty much limited to 30 FPS because that's what the Steam in-home streaming is capable of. And I'm just walking around with sandals, khaki shorts, uh, some loafers, and, uh, and a nine millimeter just like Los Angeles. Local coffee shop is closed. That's too bad. What exactly is wrong with you? <laughs> oh man, now the cops are after me. That's, this is a terrible, terrible game. This game should be removed from the market immediately, but not to, oh, a whole crowd of people. Wow. Okay, well, um, oh, it looks like we're going on vacation. I don't feel any perceived lag whatsoever. In fact, one thing to point out right now is that the sound you're hearing is actually coming from Skunk Works, not this machine, because I figured if there was any perceivable lag, it would have been noticeable by trying to fire the gun here and then the sound would be off or the sound the sound would be before you would see it here which isn't the case i'm gonna say i've never actually done a video review on something while running people over it's interesting so here's an example here i'm gonna shoot and listen to the sound and the sync of the video See, there's no lag whatsoever. 
In fact, when I look over at Skunkworks over here, there is no lag also when it comes to the input. So that's pretty cool. For all of you giving me a hard time too about my lack of weapons and stuff, I lost my game save. So as you can see, this thing is perfectly capable of being an in-home streaming gaming device as well. Now, ASRock's done a really good job at thinking ahead about different uses for this system and where you could actually mount it. For instance, it's got a, a, a little set of hardware that comes with this where you can put some screws in the back here and you've got a Visa mount on here, which is actually compatible with both types of Visa. And you mount this to the back of your monitor or your TV if you're not using that, v that Visa mount. And then this just slides in the back, slides down, once you mount that to the monitor, and then this can be sitting on the back of the PC, not even exposed or, or even visible, and you can have what seems like a complete PC built into just a monitor, but it's, on, it's just on the back. Well, Jay, if it's on the back, how are you gonna turn it on and off? Well, fortunately, the remote control also has a wireless power on function. So they've really done a lot at thinking ahead about the versatility of this. In fact, this is definitely going in my home theater because this is, I think this is gonna be a fantastic uh, and expansion of my home theater. In fact, it might even end up in the bedroom uh, because of the fact that one of the things that we lack, at least in the master bedroom in my house, is being able to watch any sort of online content back there. So uh, one thing I do wish though, and I mentioned that they had done a great job at laying this thing out, is I wish that they had put an actual headphone jack or sound output on the rear. If you guys saw when this thing was hooked up, I had a cord coming out of the front going to the back. Because if you are using this as a standard PC and you're not gonna be using the audio over HDMI, because audio doesn't carry over DVI, or not DVI, uh, DisplayPort, which I was just using for this 4K monitor, you're not gonna be able to carry the audio out of the rear. You're gonna have to bring a cable to the front, which is where the headphone jack is, and that was just unsightly. So it would have been nice to, even if they had just relocated that entire thing all the way to the back, I think that would have been better, even if someone was using headphones with this, I think it's a lot less likely that someone would be using headphones with this than say a three and a half millimeter jack hooked up to an amplifier or speakers like I was using or something of that nature. So I think that this is a fantastic little PC. No, it's not Skunk Works powerful. No, it's not a gaming machine. It does exactly what it's supposed to do. 100% silent, powerful nook type PC that's gonna give you in-home streaming capability, online streaming capability, 4K playback, and you can do gaming like you just saw through like an in-home streaming service, which I had no problems playing the game right there. Even though it was at 30 FPS, yes, I know the FPS uh, police are gonna go insane. It is what it is, guys, and it did exactly what it was intended to do. It does exactly what it's advertised to do. So there you go, guys, the ASRock B-Box Nook PC. Uh, it's not much bigger than, uh, well, the size of a Visa mount that's about an inch and a half thick. It's a fantastic little device, guys. Go and check it out if you guys have any questions. You can find links to it down in the description. Head on over to social media if you guys just want to bug me because I'll bug you back. And it's, uh, it's time to get on out of here. So thanks for watching. And as always, we'll see you in the next one. Too bad this thing wasn't made of solid gold. Because then, sorry, Azrock, I would sell this thing in a heartbeat. Like, gone. Immediately.